Thelma the Unicorn by Aaron Blabby. Thelma felt a little sad. In fact, she felt forlorn. You see, she wished with all her heart to be a unicorn. Her best friend's name was Otis. He liked her quite a lot. He said, you're perfect as you are. But Thelma said, I'm not. And that was when she saw it. A carrot on the ground. It gave her such a great idea, she squealed and jumped around. She took that simple carrot. She tied it to her nose. I'll say that I'm a unicorn. It might just work. Who knows? Well, as she did, a truck drove by. The driver rubbed his eyes. Good grief! Is that a unicorn? He shrieked in great surprise. As Thelma watched the swerving truck, it very nearly hit her. Would you believe that truck was filled with nice pink paint and glitter? Oh, Thelma looked amazing. She was a unicorn. I'm special now, she cried out loud. And so a star was born. All across the whole wide world, her fans would cheer her name. Thelma loved it every bit. The fame, the fame, the fame. Thelma was a superstar. Her dreams had all come true. But soon she found that so much fame was kind of tricky, too. You see, her fans were mad for her. They'd scream and cry and laugh. They'd chase her everywhere she went to get her autograph. In fact, they'd chase her all day long. It never, ever stopped. They chased her while she exercised. They chased her while she shopped. Please don't chase me anymore, she asked the screaming crowd. We'll chase you all we want, they said. We're fans, so it's allowed. And some were not her fans at all. No, some were really mean. And some just did the meanest things she'd really ever seen. So one dark night, she felt quite sad, this famous little pony. She said, I thought that I'd feel great, but all I feel is lonely. And so with that, she changed her mind, this lonely unicorn. She cleaned off all her sparkles, and she ditched her magic horn. And then she walked right past the crowd. They didn't even notice. She thought how nice that it would be to see her lovely Otis. And when he asked about her trip beneath their favorite tree, she simply said, oh, it was fun, but I'd rather be just me. There's No Such Thing as a Dragon by Jack Kent. Bill Bixby was rather surprised when he woke up one morning and found a dragon in his room. It was a small dragon, about the size of a kitten. The dragon wagged its tail happily when Billy patted its head. Billy went downstairs to tell his mother. There's no such thing as a dragon, says Billy's mother, and she said it like she meant it. Billy went back to his room and began to dress. The dragon came close to Billy and wagged its tail, but Billy didn't pat it. If there's no such thing as something, it's silly to pat it on the head. Billy washed his face and hands and went down to breakfast. The dragon went along. It was bigger now, the size of a dog. Billy sat down at the table. The dragon sat down on the table. This sort of thing was not usually permitted, but there wasn't much Billy's mother could do about it. She had already said there was no such thing as a dragon, and if there's no such thing as a dra dragon, you can't tell it to get off the table. Mother made some pancakes for Billy, but the dragon ate them all. Mother made some more, but the dragon ate those too. Mother kept making pancakes until she ran out of batter. Billy only got one of them. But he said that was all he really wanted anyway. Billy went upstairs to brush his teeth. Mother started clearing the table. 
The dragon, who was quite as big as mother by this time, made himself comfortable on the hall rug and went to sleep. By the time Billy came back downstairs, the dragon had grown so much he filled the hall. Billy had to go around by the way of the living room to get where his mother was. I didn't know dragons grew so fast, said Billy. There's no such thing as dragons, said mother firmly. Cleaning the downstairs took mother all morning, what with the dragon in the way, and having to climb in and out of the windows to get from room to room. By noon, the dragon filled the house. Its head hung out the front door and its tail hung out the back door. And there wasn't a room in the house that didn't have some part of a dragon in it. When the dragon awoke from his nap, he was hungry. A bakery truck went by. The smell of fresh bread was more than the dragon could resist. The dragon ran down the street after the bakery truck. The house went along, of course, like the shell on, the sna on a snail. The mailman was just coming up the path with some mail for the Bixby's when their house rushed past him and headed down the street. He chased the Bixby's house for a few blocks, but he couldn't catch it. <gasps> when Mr. Bixby came home for lunch, the first thing he noticed was that the house was gone. Luckily, one of the neighbors was able to tell him which way it went. Mr. Bixby got in his car and went looking for the house. He studied all the houses as he drove along. Finally, he saw one that looked familiar. Billy and Mrs. Mrs. Bixby were waving from the upstairs window. Mr. Bixby climbed over the dragon's head, onto the porch roof, and through the upstairs window. How did this happen? Mr. Bixby asked. It was the dragon, said Billy. There's no such thing, Mother started to say. There is a dragon, Billy insisted. A very big dragon. And Billy patted the dragon on the head. The dragon wagged its tail happily. Then, even faster than it had grown, the dragon started getting smaller. And soon, it was the size of a kitten again. I don't mind dragons this size, said Mother. Why did it have to grow so big? I'm not sure, said Billy. But I think it just wanted to be noticed. The End Unicorn and Horse. This is Unicorn and this is Horse. Unicorn is a unicorn and Horse is, well, not. Unicorn has a sapphire horn, a silver coat, a rainbow mane, and perfect white teeth. Horse does not. Unicorn eats pink cupcakes for every meal. Horse does not. Unicorn makes rainbows. Horse makes something else. Unicorn dances. Tra la la. Horse sits grumpy. Blah, blah, blah. Unicorn prances. Ha, ha, ha. Horse looks frumpy. Paw, paw, paw. Unicorn makes everything cheery. Really cheery. Horse does not. Of course, all the animals love unicorn. He has a horn for squirrel to play ring toss. Bird lines her nest with his long, beautiful hair. And everyone loves sharing his cupcakes. Won't you join us, horse? Said Unicorn. No, I don't like you, said the horse. <gasps> but what he meant was, I wish I were you. Unfortunately, not everyone who heard about Unicorn was a happy or unhappy animal. A rainbow dancing unicorn who eats cupcakes for breakfast could make someone a lot of money. One night, while everyone was asleep, 
two men crept into the unicorn's paddock. Quietly as they could, they tied a startled unicorn in ropes and loaded him into the back of their truck. And then they were off. The other animals awoke when they heard the truck. Hurry, they're stealing unicorn. But I can't run fast enough to catch them, said Squirrel. And I can't fly enough, fast enough, cried Bird. I can't run on the road, said Fox. And I can't run at all, said Turtle. Only one animal could. Horse thought and thought and thought. And then he ran. And ran and ran. And with six great chomps of horse's large teeth, Unicorn was free. Oh, thank you, said Unicorn. You're welcome, said Horse. This is Horse, and this is Unicorn. Sometimes Horse eats cupcakes, and sometimes Unicorn eats hay. Sometimes horse makes rainbow, and sometimes unicorn does not. Horse likes races. Unicorn likes ring toss. But most of all, they like each other. Horse and unicorn are friends, and that's better than anything. Even pink cupcakes. How to Dress a Dragon by Thelma Lynn Gooden. Pictures by Eric Barkley. If you have to dress a dragon, you must be prepared to catch him as he flies by. You may have to tickle tackle him to the floor and give him belly kisses. Once your dragon is still, it will be time to put on his underwear. The good thing is, dragons love underwear, especially froggy superhero ones. Silly dragon! Ha! Hee hee hee! Ho ho ho! You might have to sit saddle your dragon to put on his socks. Dragons have very ticklish toes. Silly dragon. Dragons do not like shirts with buttons. Dragons do not like shirts that pull over their heads. Dragons do not like shirts. But they do like capes. Dragons prefer shorts instead of pants. Shorts are much easier to put on with big dragon feet. Please, dragon, don't scrunch up your toes. Because shoes can be tricky. But if you let your dragon wear his froggy boots... He will be very happy. Dragons are very picky about hats. They will only wear ones that fit nicely between their horns. When your dragon is all dressed, he will want to go outside and play. But beware, if he wants to play his favorite game of Dragon and Knight, your dragon will insist on being the knight. Silly knight. Little boy with the dragon. And the dragon is dressed up like the knight. The end.
dragon in the second grade. She's our teacher, so don't be afraid. She covers her sharp scales with a cape and has eyes as big and green as a grape. She sometimes spits out fiery flames when she takes count and calls our names. But you have to watch out for her tail. Her tail is as big as the tail of a whale. In the morning, she is usually late. She can't easily fit through the gate. To lose her would be a terrible shame because she makes all our learning a game. Miss Scales and Wings must be very brave. After all, she lives in a deep, dark cave. She flies to school just like a plane. All the third graders think she's insane. But we know Miss Scales and Wings is really just great. The librarian is Mr. Tooth and Claw, her mate. Hi everyone. I'm here to show you what's in this week's kits. Okay, first of all, up until this point, we've read some books about dragons and unicorns. So that's gonna be some of our kits. But I do want to mention one thing. If you'll remember back on week one, I told you about this fun reading log that you could do through the summer. It says beginning June 1st, color in one book for every hour that you read. And this will go until August 12th. I would like to make a little change on this because someone brought it to my attention that that's a lot of books. There are 62 books on this page. So we're going to say color in one book for every half an hour that you read. That would be uh, about 31 hours for 73 days. Okay, so that's just a little little update on what we're going to do with our week reading logs, okay? And these can be turned in when you're done with them, and they'll be entered in for additional prizes to just our regular prizes for summer reading, okay? All right, now let's look at this week's kit. So if you want to open up your kit, the first thing we're going to do is I want you to find the white paper bag, okay? So just the plain white paper bag that's in your kit. And then you'll find your pink piece of paper and your white piece of paper, okay? For your, we are going to make a unicorn out of the white paper bag, okay? So for your unicorn, you're going to want to cut an oval out of this pink. And I will show you the final, Okay, so here is your final product. Here's your final unicorn. So you cut out an oval, and then you put some nostrils on there for the unicorn's nose, draw on some eyes, and then with your white paper, you're gonna wanna cut a couple of ears and your horn. Then you can cut a couple smaller triangles with your pink to make your ears. Now, as you can see, you also have yarn in your kit, okay? And that is to make the horse's mane. Okay, so see, I've got my mane on the back. I let it drape really long. And then I did short ones in the front for my unicorn, okay? So, I'm gonna tell you some unicorn jokes with my puppet. What game do you never play with a unicorn? Leapfrog. Because <laughs> you don't want to land on that horn, do you? What do unicorns eat for breakfast? Lucky charms. <laughs> what did the baby unicorn say to the mommy unicorn? Where's my popcorn? <laughs> What is the difference between a unicorn and a carrot? One is a funny beast and the other is a bunny feast. <laughs> what do you call a smart unicorn? The acorn. <laughs> okay. How about we do a knock knock joke about unicorns? Knock knock. 
Who's there? Bud. Bud who? But what if the unicorn follows me home? <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Hair. Hair who? Hair is the fairy brush I've been telling you about. And the last one is knock, knock. Who's there? Stopwatch. Stopwatch who? Stop what you're doing and come look for the unicorns with me. All right. Now, let's pull out the rest of the stuff in your kit. So you're gonna pull out a green cup, okay? Don't throw away your white paper from your unicorn though, okay? Because you'll still have a few scraps on your white paper. So pull that out as well. And then pull out the crepe paper, okay? So what you're gonna do with your green cup is the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out the bottom. Okay, cut out the bottom just like that, okay? Once you get that cut out, then you're gonna cut out two circles from your white paper, and then you're going to draw black on the inside and tape or glue them to your cup so it looks like eyeballs sticking up off your dragon, okay? Then you're gonna take your crepe paper and you're going to cut it in to a few strips and you're going to tape it on the inside of your cup. I do suggest taping on this one because it'll be just a little bit easier. And then you tape it on the inside of your cup just like so. And then I cut a little peek at the end but that's up to you however you want to do that. And then, your dragon can blow fire at everyone around them, okay? And if you want to do a little rhyme with it, you can do, all around the castle, the knight chased the dragon, the dragon thought it was all in fun, roar with the dragon, okay? So those are your two crafts. Now left in your bag is a cool unicorn airplane flyer, okay? So you can pull that out and put it together. And also a cool sling and stick dragon, okay? That's what should be in your bag for your prizes for this week. Really quick, I'm gonna finish up with just a couple of dragon jokes. What does a dragon eat with his soup? Firecrackers. What's the most stressful thing about being a dragon? Trying to blow out the candles on your birthday cake. <laughs> what do you call an angry dragon? What? An earthquake. <laughs> what do dragons do before the big game? They get all fired up. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Dragon. Dragon who? I'm a dragon today. I need a nap. <laughs> so last thing, probably in our slides right before this, you saw a dragon generator for your name. You can make up your own dragon name. And there's also one that you can make up your own unicorn name. My dragon name is Casrock Secret Keeper. And my unicorn name is Jelly Sugar Sprinkles. So these will be posted in this video as well. So you'll have those. We hope that you guys are enjoying everything. We hope you're still doing well and staying healthy. And we will see you guys soon. Bye.